Music and public health is a new field of study. Only few scientific studies with small samples have documented health implications of musical participation. The present survey is the largest of its kind so far. Health musicking is the theoretical concept by which the study is informed. On this slide you can see Bruno Stieger's definition and my own formulation of the four central aims of health musicking. In the next slide these aims are placed in a descriptive map of the field. This quadrant map shows four different perspectives on how musicking can be used to promote affirmative, corrective or transformational experiences, either bodily, emotional or relational. Each quadrant includes examples of arena, agenda, activities and artifacts. The primary public health quadrant is the lower left, with the music arenas and activities that people engage in in everyday life. But can participation in these types of music in promote health? So far, there are only a few and rather small studies to support the idea that music in can improve quality of life and physical or emotional well-being. Two research questions guided the present study. Is there an association between self-rated health and active use of music in daily life? What associations can be observed between musical background, uses and understanding of music as a health factor and self-reported health? Data came from the Danish Health and Morbidity Survey 2013, based on a simple random sample of 25,000 adult Danes. 14,000 responded. The survey had a total of 100 questions, with 8 questions addressing musical behavior such as active playing or singing, music in everyday life, and music as a potential health resource. The majority of adult Danes do not play or sing on a daily basis. However, up to 40% invest one daily hour or more in musicking, with young people being more active than older people and women more than men. We asked informants if they believe music activities and music experiences can help stay healthy. More than 75% believe that music can definitely or to some extent help stay healthy. We asked the informants for what purposes they use music in everyday life. There are significant age differences here. Almost all young people use music every day for many purposes, while only two-thirds of the informants over 65 use music to regulate mood or well-being. This slide documents a significant correlation between self-rated good or excellent health and playing or singing at least one hour daily. In other words, both men and women who reported playing or singing daily rated their health as better than men and women who did not play or sing. However, when looking closer at the musically active part of the sample, clear gender differences appeared. These men reported more pain and discomfort than the men who were not musically active, while the pattern was quite the opposite with the musically active women. To summarize, two results stand out. There was a clear association between daily singing, playing and health and health-related quality of life. The study also showed that adult Danes use music for many different purposes in everyday life and most Danes consider music a health promoter.